EcoJustice is a $5 million a year left-wing lobby firm. Here's their registration with the lobbyist commissioner. They have 17 lobbyists on staff. Great. We're free country. It's not against the law to run a business of left-wing activists. Might as well talk. Five million bucks a year? It's a pretty big shop. To put that into perspective, compare that to the largest left-wing political party in Canada, the federal NDP. In 2010, now I'm not using 2011 because it was an election year and thus clearly an aberration. In, in a typical year, like 2010, the NDP spent a total of $7.75 million politicking. The party of Jack Layton and Thomas Mulcair went on to win over 100 seats in Parliament. They just spent $7.75 million. Bucks. And to reach that staggering sum, they had to rely on government subsidies, as all parties do. So the NDP is not that much bigger than EcoJustice with its 5.1 million bucks. That's how powerful EcoJustice is as a lobby group. But unlike most lobby groups, EcoJustice, for some reason, has a charitable number with Revenue Canada, as if there's some charity on par with a food bank or a homeless shelter. So they don't have to pay any taxes. Here's their Revenue Canada disclosure page, 5.1 million bucks. But I bet you've never heard of them. That's because they don't bother with boring things like actually trying to win elections with the public like the NDP does. They don't test their ideas with real people. They prefer to sue in court. Seriously, they're a suing charity. Did you know those even existed? And EcoJustice sues to stop the oil sands. Can you believe we give such a thing the same moral and tax status as a, as a hospital or even a church? <laughs> well, today EcoJustice announced a new lawsuit they want to stop the proposed Northern Gateway Pipeline from Alberta to the B.C. coast. They're not content to argue the case in the court of public opinion. Well, why bother? They want to argue it in the court of law, even though the pipeline hasn't even been approved yet. And the plans haven't even been finalized. Because, you know, even if they lose their lawsuit, they'll still have succeeded in gumming up the works and slowing down the process, possibly even by years. That's the one thing you can count on lawyers to do, especially hyper-political lawyers like those who work for the EcoJustice lobby firm. If you think a $5 million lobby group like EcoJustice is huge, well, there is more. EcoJustice has teamed up with other groups with even bigger budgets for this lawsuit, like David Suzuki's foundation. He's a $10 million organization, and for some reason... He's got charitable status, too. And others, including Greenpeace, the multinational corporation headquartered in Holland, whose annual budget regularly tops $200 million bucks a year. Greenpeace Canada had its charitable status stripped from it because it's so political. They're still part of this lawsuit. So this group of corporate goliaths is teaming up to sue the pipeline to stop it and all the jobs that come with it. Now, look, I, I disagree. I think we need the pipeline, just like we need a railway in Canada and highways and airports. You can't have a modern economy without those things. And you can't have jobs in a country like ours if you can't export your products like oil or minerals. But fine, let's have this debate in Canada. Left wing versus right wing, environmentalists worker versus workers. Fine, fine, fine. Let, let's argue it out. But there's one thing I actually haven't told you yet about this $5 million 17-man lobby group that's teamed up with David Suzuki's $10 million lobby firm and four other lobby firms. They're not Canadian. You know, sure, so, some of their staff do live here. I grant you that. And some of their money does, in fact, come from Canada. But literally millions of dollars in their budgets come from foreigners who have a very public mission to destroy Canada's economy and stop those jobs in their tracks. And that, I think, we can all agree on, left wing or right wing. This should be a Canadian decision. Since when do we allow foreigners to make our decisions for us about things like roads or highways or pipelines? And in some cases, like David Suzuki's foundation, since when do we allow foreign governments to pay a charity to sue to stop economic development in Canada? In 2009 to 2010, David Suzuki's foundation alone took in more than a million dollars from foreigners, including foreign embassies. The Sierra Club of British Columbia, another so-called charity joining the lawsuit today, took more than half a million foreign dollars. Wildsight, another so-called charity joining the lawsuit, took more than half a million bucks, too, from foreigners. To call this lawsuit Canadian isn't true. 
Any more than, say, calling the Saudi embassy in Ottawa Canadian is true. I mean, I guess it is actually located in Ottawa, and it has some Canadians on the payroll, and their address is Canadian. But the Saudi embassy works for the Saudi dictatorship back home. They hate Canadian oil because we're their competitor. Same thing with David Suzuki's foundation and EcoJustice and Sierra Club and the rest of the foreign-funded lobbyists who happen to have a Canadian mailing address. They're foreign meddlers interfering in our country's economy. If this sounds like a conspiracy theory, it's not, because a theory implies a guess or a hunch that really can't be proved. But there is no doubt about foreign plans to kill our economy, because it's not a secret. It's something that foreign funders boast about. Let me show you this. Uh, let me show you a campaign document. I've shown you this before. This is a campaign document by the Rockefeller Brothers Fund run out of New York City. In 2008, they had a private meeting to attack what they call the tar sands. Now, they mean Canada's oil sands, but they didn't have their meeting about Canada's oil sands here in Canada. It wasn't a meeting run by Canadians. It was an American meeting, an American plan to wound our Canadian economy. Look at page 24 of their plan. It's their budget. Seven million dollars a year. And the number one line item on the budget? Lawsuits, like the one announced today. On page 36 of their plan, they talk about bogging down Canadian regulatory processes. And look at that there. Uh, this is a group of white millionaires and billionaires sitting down there in New York. This is the Rockefellers, remember. But they're smart, these American liberals. They know that if a billionaire Rockefeller stands up and says, don't develop Canadian oil, it wouldn't be taken any more kindly up here than if some Saudi sheik said it. So look at their plan. They want to find some racial minority window dressing, some aboriginal folks, to be their moral cover, especially for lawsuits. The Rockefellers are just one foreign foundation, but there are many waging economic war against Canada. Another one is the Tides Foundation out of San Francisco. EcoJustice has taken huge grants from the Hewlett Foundation out of San Francisco too. I don't think it should be illegal for foreigners, even for Saudi dictators, to hire Canadian lobbyists to attack the oil sands. It's one of the reasons Canada is better than they are. We allow for dissent. We even allow for lawsuits. I just think that to call any of these local puppets, EcoJustice, Sierra Club, and the great Canadian David Suzuki, charities is a farce. The Saudis would throw such people in jail. Now, I don't believe in doing that. But neither do I believe that they deserve charitable status so that they can collect their anti-Canadian lawsuit money tax-free as if they're some food bank. Nah, let these foreign meddlers sue. Fine. Just strip them of their charitable status and make them disclose every American dollar they pocket. Oh, yeah. And every Saudi real that they put in their bank account, too.